Hey folks, welcome to today's booth mini gathering. This is the Thanksgiving edition. Now, I know that it's post Thanksgiving. I'm hoping this won't be like, you know, post Christmas where once the day is over, it just feels like the whole thing is over. I'm thinking that Thanksgiving isn't something we should try to confine to just one day a year, you know? So this is the Thanksgiving edition. What I would like to do today is I want to bring back a ritual that was part of our, you know, in real life gatherings in the pre COVID era. I found this a really helpful thing personally for centering me and centering us as a community. And, uh, and I know that, for example, Dr. Kerr uh, took the phrase from it and, and used it as kind of the, the benchmark for her reflections in the last part of her time with us as a community. This idea that bidden or, bi or unbidden, God is present. So I'm gonna light a candle and it's just gonna be uh, burning in the background as we go through our reflection together this morning. Bidden or unbidden. God is present.
So it's pumpkin season. It's pumpkin everything. I heard earlier this week that Kraft is releasing a pumpkin spice version of Kraft dinner. <laughs> I tell Kraft dinner, wow. I don't know if that's true. Uh, I heard it on CBC News, you know, so I'm pretty sure it's not fake news. But I, I, whether that's a good idea or a bad idea, I think that's an open question. What I do know is that there are some folks who plan ahead for pumpkin season a lot more deliberately and further ahead than I do. For me, I kind of feel like if I get a little bit of pumpkin spice flavored ice cream maybe or a piece of pumpkin pie, you know, I'm, I'm good. But there are people for whom this is like, this is what they're aimed at all year. So for example, in Roland, Manitoba, a little town in Southern Manitoba, they have an annual pumpkin fair that includes a contest called the Great Pumpkin Commonwealth Championship. <laughs> That's a pretty heavy duty name. And this year's winner, okay, check this out. <laughs> check this out. This year's winner was a guy named Corny Banman from Winkler, Manitoba. Corny grew a pumpkin that weighed 1,373.5 pounds. <laughs> Incredible. I have no idea how you would grow a pumpkin that big. But here's one thing I learned from an interview that I heard about that contest. If you want to win a biggest pumpkin contest, you have to plant the right kind of pumpkin seed. And I, why was I surprised that there was more than one kind of pumpkin seed? But I kind of felt like I was. So it turns out that the kind of seed that grows biggest pumpkin is not the same kind of seed that grows like tastiest pumpkin. So when these big bruiser pumpkins that win these things are done being champions, they get busted up for cattle feed instead of making like, you know, 2,000 pumpkin pies or something like that. It turns out that there is a direct relationship between what you plant and what you harvest. And as is often the case with things in nature, nature has something to teach us. The principle that you harvest what you plant isn't just true in the garden, it's true in every aspect of our lives, both individually and collectively as a culture. If we want to grow good things, if we want to grow lovely things and true things, then those are the kind of seeds that we need to plant. And it sounds sort of dead obvious when you say it, but it's amazing how often we will sow the seeds of discord and wonder why we're not harvesting peace, for example. In the book of Galatians, Paul is writing to a community that he really, really wants to see good things grow in, just like we all do for our communities, right? He even gives them a list. And some of us will know this list, of course. It's kind of a famous Bible list. But he says, these are good things. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are things, Paul says, that have their roots in the divine. They, they, they grow out of God. But they only grow if we plant them and nurture them. Right? He will, we will, he says to them, reap what we sow. Hmm. So, as we mark Thanksgiving or post-Thanksgiving, here's a question for all of us to think about. What would we like to see grow in the world in the coming year? I mean, I know there's some really obvious things we'd like to see change. It'd be really nice to see a, you know, a vaccine <laughs> for this, for COVID-19 and, and to see the pandemic end and for us to be able to be together without flinching and covering up uh, our faces again. But what other sorts of things would we like to see grow in the world in the coming year? Or to put it another way, by the time next Thanksgiving comes around, what would we want to be able to express thanks for seeing more of in the world? Maybe that list from Galatians is a good start, right? Maybe we should pick one of those. Maybe we should decide if we want to focus for the coming year on growing more love or growing more joy, nurturing peace, cultivating kindness or goodness, practicing faithfulness, maybe seeing if we can take up a little more space with gentleness or make something beautiful grow that looks like the fruit of self-control. Now, that kind of exercise can feel a little bit like saying, you know, like the, like the sort of famous, you know, beauty contest question, what do you want to change in the world? Or what do you want to see in the world? And the stock answer is, you know, world peace, or, uh, you know, 
to we want to fix climate, the climate crisis, or we want to fix the refugee crisis, or we want to see racism eradicated, or we want to see equality uh, for everybody, and you know, like these huge, deeply desirable, but these huge things. And sometimes we need to, we need to break it down. We need to get it down to something that we can kind of get in our hands, you know. Instead of saying, you know, like by next year I want to just hope hard enough that I have a giant pumpkin, we kind of have to go, what's the right kind of seed to grow a giant pumpkin? And we have to go get the seed, we have to take it in our hand, and we have to put it in the dirt, and then we have to till and weed it and water it and fertilize it and do talk to it, play it nice music. I don't know what this guy did, you know, but those things, right? Those everyday things that we have to do to grow the things that we desire to see in the world. So here's the next layer to the question. What do we need to plant today? so that the thing we desire to see in the world will grow in the next year. There'll be more of it. We're not all going to answer that question the same way for a bunch of reasons. One is we're not all going to pick the same thing that we'd like to see more of in the world. And the other thing is that even if both of you, you and I both pick peace, let's say, we're not going to plant the same seed. We're going to plant something that is unique, something that we feel connected to, that we feel like we have some picture of how we can nurture it and grow it and see it become more in the world. So think about that. Let's think about that. First of all, what's the thing we want to see more of in the world a year from now? Then what's the seed that we need to plant as individuals and that we need to nurture? And maybe other people will join us in nurturing that. Maybe it'll turn into a really deliberate exercise and there'll be a kind of a collective effort to grow more of that in the world. Maybe our effort we'll see something begin to blossom that other people notice and gather around and help nurture. I don't know. I don't know how that'll work. But I know that if we don't plant a seed, we're for sure not going to have more of whatever it is that we want to see more of in the world. So let's reflect on that a little bit as we mark Thanksgiving. Let's ask ourselves, what's the seed I want to plant so that the thing that I dream of can grow in the world? How can I cultivate that? How can I change what comes up, what grows big, strong, and healthy in the garden of the world? Hmm. Well, I'm going to go. I'm going to go home and think about that. I hope you uh, can take a few moments to do the same, and we'll get together again soon. Peace to you. Bye for now.